Hey. Welcome, everyone, to another uh, fantastic uh, uh, episode of the Super Mega Cast. That's uh, right. Starring Matt Watson and Ryan McGee. That's right. The two funny brothers. That's right. Dos funny hombres. Dos hombres comicas. How do you say funny in Spanish? Comicas? Comicas? Co- co- Funios. Dos funios hombres. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, bienvenido to the Dos Funios Hombres podcast. Um, it's another beautiful day. Uh, another beautiful day with, with all of you. Well, it's overcast. Well, yes, it's overcast. But I think overcast days are some of the most beautiful. Yeah, they, I, especially, it's supposed to be like summertime. I'm sure summertime will hit hard in August. It's been weird, man. It's it's June, but it's it's been overcast and cold. That's just uh, it's just weird in my book. Is it just like that June, what is it, the June, June gloom? Yeah. I don't know, man. This whole year's been weird weather-wise. It's been just like... The rain? The rain? It's been throwing me off. Well, you know, once it rains, it pours. That's what they say. And, you know, speaking of throwing off, people might, you know, video watchers might notice something a little different about this episode. Yeah, see if you can spot the difference. We're not going to give it away, but uh, see if you guys can, uh, if you're if you're keen enough to pick it up, if your eye is sharp enough to, to notice the subtle difference. So, and for the audio listeners, uh, try to guess at what the difference is. Just take a wild guess. <laughs> you might be right. You have nowhere to say it. Well, I guess on Patreon, if you're, if you're on the audio version, you could comment what you think it is. Or you could go to when the YouTube version is uploaded. And say, I'm just here. I'm an audio listener. I'm not. Make it clear. I am not giving this a full view. They can't even give it one single peek. I am just here to say. And then, you know, whatever, whatever you. I don't want to, you know, give you the exact template to work off of. I want you right. to have some creative. Uh, you want them to do the work themselves. Yeah. You want them to show their work. Exactly. I remember in uh, in in school. Um, on homework when it would be like, and you have to show your work. That's why I hated that shit so much in like science. Or Can't like, use a calculator. It's like, show your work. I would just bullshit it all the time. Like I would get the answers from someone else and then fake my work on the side. And But you know, like that fake, like because you're a kid, you're just like, oh, whatever. It's bullshit. But like to a teacher, it's like two plus J equals, that's not even a I would do of- all that shit for, like, <laughs> homework when they look at it quick, but I, sometimes I would try to do it on, on, like, uh, well, because sometimes on, like, a quiz, I just try to have bad handwriting on purpose, so it's like, oh, his work could be right, but I just can't really decipher what he's doing. But if he got to the right answer, it must work for him. I did that with annotations, like, I had to annotate a lot of, like, articles and books I had to read, and I would just, like, underline one word and be like, Interesting. Yeah. I'd like write that next to it, just to or like I just see a quote and outline it in red pen, even though I didn't know the significance of the quote. It'd just be like, dude, see? my teacher called me out in front of the whole notes. class once for that. Yeah, like so I had uh, I had anno- we were reading like Dante's Inferno, and we had to write in the book on each page. You had to write, and you had to annotate on every page. Um, and I I had you know I had to do that for a Tale of Two Cities. Yeah, it, it's I annotating's dumb in my opinion, but I guess it's one way that they're like, well, prove that you read it. So I just done some, like, I read it on the bus that morning, like, the chapter I was supposed to read. I read it right before I got to school, and I said the whole thing with, like, the, the highlighter where I just highlight, like, random sentences and then, like, would circle some shit and be, like, very interesting. <laughs> foreshadowing? And I remember my teacher. Uh, I wish you put foreshadowing much. Like, <laughs> spoke like that. Really, really uh, like snarky. <laughs> yeah. Like, little additions like that. But he, he picks up my book, and he checks it, and he goes, Come on, Matt. And I was like, <laughs> and this is like the day I just started. This was the first first block. He's like, come, come, come on, Matt. Seriously. And I, because this teacher was very outspoken too. And I was like, what? And he was like, he said, and he started reading them out loud. He's like, very interesting. Very interesting. Come on, you didn't even try with this. <laughs> and then he does the whole thing where he's like, okay, here's here's an annotation. Why did you write this one? And he reads it out loud, but doesn't let me see it. Mm-hmm. He's like, what, what what were you writing that in relation to? And I was just like. Uh, you know, just, pfft. and he's like, he's like, try harder next time. Put it down on my desk. Did you try harder next time? Yeah, I did. I, I mean, it made me try. I had to. 
Because I knew that the next class, if I showed up and had done the same bullshit, I would have been in big trouble. So, yeah. Hopefully someone else got embarrassed at some other point to take the heat off of you. Or were you always the kid that that faked his notes? No, I mean, Faker. I, I, I was one of many. But where I sat was like, the class was like a U shape, the desk. So I was the first one he would check every time. Because mm. I, I sat next to the door and he would go. Funny thing is, now his son is a meghead. Really? So who won? Teacher. I feel like I can't you say did. his name. You you control his spawn. He uh someone, Mentally, you someone can, told you me have that control over his spawn somehow. I, I do because what I heard was was years later, uh I heard uh from someone at the school, uh they were like, Yeah, his son uh has like your merch and stuff. Super mega merch. So I was like, Yeah, so uh, you know, you can call me out, uh te- Mr. Teacher for Faking my annotations, but guess what? Your son is watching our videos, so. Yeah. Look where Matt is today. You could suck it. He got here through nothing but hard work, grit, mostly charm. See, if I had actually taken the time to read Dante's Inferno, I might have, you know, been enlightened by it and changed my career path and never done this. an English teacher. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah, a real job, an English teacher. Oh, get out of here. What What are you doing? Teaching our young? Teaching the future generations? Psst. You would have made a good high school teacher, Ryan. You would have been a fun teacher. Because you got, you have, you have just enough of, uh, you're funny. You got that, like, cool teacher charm. I have no passion charm. for, for teaching. Do you think a lot so of I teachers have passion? So I don't think I would passion? be a good te- Uh, I feel like, uh, you know, whether it's, like, a passion to teach or a passion to inspire a young generation i i feel like the type of teacher you're talking about you're not describing a like a oh glum at my desk you're describing as you said a good teacher a cool high school teacher and i feel like those teachers have somewhat of a passion towards education sure. or informing the you know youth and inspiring the future generation and lighting that fire or whatever i feel like you would be a cool teacher because you also have just the right amount of like when when that fuse lights you know, you could you could yell at a student real good. I'll tell him to sit down. Yeah, you could like go, Mr. McGee. If I was if I was clowning around in class, let's say I'm the class clown and you're my you're my history teacher, right? Okay. okay? I'm and you know I'm doing all sorts of goofy things and I'm really it, it's it it's it's been a, a long day for you. Yeah. You haven't had your coffee. You're okay. you're tired. Of course. What are you gonna do? Okay, you want to act it out or something? Yeah. Like I'm at my desk. I'm working. It's it's silent Let's reading say. time, and I'm I'm over here whispering. You've already told me to be quiet once, okay? Mm-hmm. And I'm over here just still, just you know, flirting with some girls. Okay, okay. Like I'm like doing this. schoolwork. Stop. Does that work? Yeah. If you kept a, a loaded Glock under your desk to pull it out. Yeah. <laughs> that would that dude that would make me shut the fuck up if I was a, a student in that class. Shut up. You know, I was they, just pantomiming, putting it up. I had to, my imagination had to believe it was. Yeah, you. I mean, you had to put it away safely. Yeah, that's the whole argument of giving teachers guns. You know, they they could use the guns not just to stop a school shooting, but also if the students are being excessively rowdy. You know, exactly. So I think that's 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 probably the best course of action moving forward in America is to arm all the teachers or even the students. Just, I mean, just arm every student. Do, I mean, do you want to question someone who has a gun pointed at your face? No. Someone has a gun pointed at your face. Are you really intent on giving the explanation of why that you think they're wrong in a particular situation? No. You know? Now, when they, when they talk about arming the teachers, what are we talking? Are we talking like a, like a little Glock? Are we talking like a full, like a shotgun or like an assault rifle? Hmm. Or, or maybe teachers are the only ones that get, teachers and military, the only ones that get fully automatic machine guns. So teachers would get like an, an actual like, AK-47 that can just pop off rounds. They give the teachers just, like, fucking nunchuck training. (laughs) Every teacher is, like, fucking badass with nunchucks. They give you all the moves where it's, like... (laughs) (laughs) They'll start rough. Those, like, when when, uh, when someone starts shooting at them, they'll start... Ding, 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 ding! They can can deflect the bullets with the (laughs) nunchucks. Yep. Nunchucks would be such a cool skill to to be able to master, but I, I feel like I'd flinch too much because I feel like when I'm... I would just smack myself in the face with it. It'd be uh, that, too that's easy a part of to. learning nunchucks is the pain. Yeah. Same with a butterfly knife, right? Yeah, I you gotta cut yourself a few times. Do you uh I never played with a butterfly knife. When and uh, I, I was never intent on being 
someone who could like, you know, it's cool. I feel like if you have a knife, regardless if it's like, if someone has a knife and they're just like doing this in like a situation, I'm like, oh shit, he has a knife. But if they're also like, I'm kind of like, oh shit, they have a knife. It's like the same level of threat. Yeah, it's, there's no extra threat. He's just doing cool little moves with it. He might be, be like, I guess more like he's, he can handle the knife better and he would stab me with more finesse. It's honestly the equivalent of like, if I had a rifle on you and I, you know, when I pulled it out, I pretended like it was an electric guitar and did like a crazy realistic looking <laughs> guitar solo on it. You know, it's like, it's the, the gun is still the same. It's still the same level of threat. Well, I think it's, you know, it's the, uh, Fidget spinner for knife lovers, you know. Yeah, it's. I think that's what it really is. I think just it shows like you've just spinner. you've got skill, but also it shows you're not afraid to play with danger. Yeah, you're. You, you know, you can play with knives, and it's like usually when you start doing that, people are like, "Are you gonna cut yourself?" And it shows when you're you, not afraid of that, when you don't cut yourself, just skills. Very, uh, big skill. Jim bought a. Uh, when we were in Arizona, he bought a thing. It was all about right. It was it was uh to teach you yeah. to safely use a butterfly. So it's knife. like it's like a dummy butterfly knife. So yeah. you can't actually cut yourself with it, but it's how you learn. And the guy at the knife shop was calling him a pussy for it. Really? And he was like, no, "Wait, the guy at the knife shop?" Yeah, he was like, him? "You're a pussy if you use that. You just got to go for the real deal." And he's like, "No, I don't want to cut myself." And he's like, "That's how you learn. You got to cut yourself." And he's like, "Well, couldn't I just learn with this and then use a real one?" He's like, "Yeah, but if you don't cut yourself, you don't you don't learn properly." I guess he's like stemming from that part of the he that the man accosting Jim in this situation is thinking, right? You got to go back to the to like where when the neurons were first firing. Exactly. For, <laughs> when humans were first committing this act. Because you, you have to dig deep for this. Cuz yeah, I mean, I guess there's pain, pain. Pain, yeah. It's it, the great learner. Yeah. You know, that's that's how we learned fire was bad. You know, yep. you touch it and you went, ow, that's that's hot. And then that that's a strong emotion that sticks in your brain. Those neurons stay activated forever. I don't know the science of it, but something like that. So then, you know, you're scared to hurt yourself in the future. So I feel like I don't know if you'd learn any better from that though. I feel like if you just learn the moves, you know. You you learn you would learn how to try to negate that response yeah but we should get some butterfly knives and just every episode of the podcast you and i are just sitting here just you know just in the background you hear it <laughs> or you how, well, how, how, do, how do how do the audio listeners know that i'm not pulling out a butterfly knife right now oh shit and watch this whoa yep damn dude oh yeah you got good at that oh yeah i did oh watch this one huh Whoa! Look how long it's staying in the air. No fucking way. And it's gonna fall back down. <sighs> yep, yep. Nice, dude. Let me put this thing away. Yeah, audio listeners will have no idea if you really did that or not. Nope. Which you did. I did. Video video watchers. You they know they got to see it for themselves, the video watchers. The Chad video watchers uh, <laughs> versus uh, the Virgin <laughs> audio listeners, you know. <laughs> The video watchers will have seen you do that whole cool little thing with your butterfly knife, but the, the virgin <laughs> audio listeners? Not a chance. They won't know if it's real or not. Well, they, they can listen to it, but do you really get to understand exactly what I'm doing with the butterfly knife if you can only listen to it? No. Stupid. I right? mean, it's unless, you have not a really, it. unless you have a really vivid imagination where it's like... Which a lot of our fans don't. No. That's why they come to us. Exactly. They need us to create these wild scenarios for them to... You know, put themselves in or to 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 imagine, you know, us in. To, of course, to to spice up their boring lives. Um, I mean, look at this imaginative set. Look at this, guys. <laughs> There's a lot of imagination here. Well, sorry, uh, audio listeners. I guess you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, they are not going to like this episode, Ryan. The reality of the situation is there's at least one person who's, like, actually fuming. They are, but, they are but, seething right now. But, you know, the, the, the beautiful thing about this earth we live on is, is the wealth of different experiences uh, that exist. For even one simple action. Let's, let's take ranch, for example. Ranch dressing? There are some people who love ranch. Mm -hmm. There are some people... Who find ranch all right. Okay. There are others who hate it with a passion. Right. And then there are some where it's a mystery. They're allergic to ranch. So it's in this gray area. Right. You know, it's just, it's just it's something as simple as 
a, a shitty salad dressing, you know? So I know where you stand on it then. What? You just called it a shitty salad dressing. See, and you, well, I, it, my whole point of saying it's shitty, I, I have ranch dressing. Usually it's like I would put ranch dressing on because I don't like re- kind of like regular cheap iceberg lettuce. So it's like I'm just going to drown it in this. I use ranch on everything but salad, pretty much. Like, like I don't, like, sa- I don't dip it's, chicken nuggets or anything like that. No, I, like, I use it oh, on uh, chicken wings. Yeah, I use it on stuff that's not salad. Like, I, I don't really like ranch on salad that much. Mm-hmm. With salad dressing, I'd rather have a little, uh, little more character. You know, I'd, I'd like, you know what I love? I love uh, Italian. Italian's dressing. good. Italian was my go to at the Ruby Tuesday salad bar. Oh, it's fucking delicious. I love, uh, I feel like there used to be a brand of dressing called like Wishbone or something. You know uh, what I'm talking about? I, I, I have no recollection of Puck. it. So I couldn't help you. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, buddy. But balsamic vinaigrette, dude. That, yes. Raspberry balsamic vinaigrette. I don't know about raspberry, but I, but balsamic. It's vin- good. It's really good. That, my favorite salad dressing actually is like a house salad dressing at a place called, it's like a chain. It's a Japanese uh, like barbecue, kind of like Korean barbecue, except you just cook meat on a grill, right? And you can order dishes up to a certain amount, whatever. It's called gukaku. We, we, we've been there. And they have this salad dressing that they use for their house salad. That's it's delicious. Amazing. It's so good. And apparently, sorry, all of a sudden, the room just got muffled and there's a ringing in, my, in this ear. Are you having a stroke? No. It was just weird. It was just all of a sudden, it just, and then I... Ee- I get that sometimes too, where it feels like the pressure changes, and then I'm I go like, you, was there no difference for you and Pred? No, in how the room vibe. It, it's like I go I go like deaf in one ear, and it starts ringing. It's like, yeah. Well, that was weird. Yeah, might just be a minor stroke. What was I What was I on about before my Gukaku salad dressing? Is my favorite salad dressing at the it's moment. It's great. Uh, you can apparently buy it at the restaurant. So next time I'm I I I I show up. You're gonna have to walk out there with a couple bottles of it. Oh yeah, like one time, uh, I went to Buffalo Wild Wings to buy Markiplier some bottles <sighs> of spicy garlic dressing. It was his favorite sauce. It was, and we were going over to his house, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Hey, while you're out, could you stop by the Buffalo Wild Wings and get me a couple <laughs> bottles of this dressing?" And I was I, like, I, "Okay." I love it because, like, usually, like, this was the. Th- I guess this is what caught me, I guess, got it a little weird for me. It was just, like, typically you would expect, like, if you're going out to, like, hang out with someone or, like, uh, come home and you're, like, asking, like, roommates to grab something. It's like, hey, can you grab, like, a pack of beers? Hey, can you grab some water? Hey, can Can you, you like, get some toilet paper? We're almost out. Yeah, but, like, could you stop by the local Buffalo Wild Wings and pick up some some what is it, spicy garlic? Spicy garlic dressing. <laughs> Three bottles. It's in of a it. bottle. Three of it. Three, Three of them. Oh yeah. Well, because Mark would fucking. This is no bit. Like we like playing bits, but no bit. The reason he would buy it, if I'm remembering correctly, the cauliflower. Yes. Yeah. He would just get a bowl of cla- cauliflower and douse it in that shit. I don't just, think he even like grilled the cauliflower or anything. It was just raw cauliflower, <laughs> and he would just dip it. Yep. And then the spicy garlic dressing and then just, just munch on that shit. Ugh. It was just such a weird request to ask someone, like, while it's like, while you're out, can you go to Buffalo Wild Wings and get me some salad dressing of this one specific flavor? But, Matt, do you remember Markiplier's dumplings? I do remember Markiplier's dumplings. I bet you there's not too many people in this world, in this gal- in this universe even, yeah, who have enjoyed, gotten to experience Markiplier's dumplings. You and I are part of the select few who have had the the pleasure the privilege to have markiplier's dumplings dude i they were good i woofed it i woofed that down every time the moment he would say that he was making those dumplings oh dude it's like justin's chili (laughs) you know markiplier has his thing so when ron and i lived with markiplier back in 2015 early 2016 as well every now and then he would uh he'd go boys i'm making my my sweet korean dumplings and, but he uh, made the dough thicker to resemble like, like German dumpling. Or, yeah, it, was, was, it wasn't Korean. It, it was just like he it was did just something like dumpling he, soup. He did it something. He did something to make it somewhat different. I remember I I, expect, I, I helped him once make the 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 dumplings with the dough, and and he disapproved of my. I wasn't doing it right. Apparently, well, you probably weren't. I probably wasn't. Uh, but I've never been able to to touch a. Uh, make a dumpling dish since though i've been to my self-esteem has been shattered that's right we have you know there there are a lot of 
in, in in our friend group, we've had good dishes. At Jim Grills. Jim Jim has been grilling different different meats. He's Jim's good on the grill. Did you have Ben's family's uh, recipe of ziti, whatever? Yeah, yeah I did. Oh, so fucking, it's fucking good. delicious. I want him to make that again. Him and our friend Zeph were talking about cooking some maybe next week. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Having a little uh, ziti night. So I'd be down for a ziti night. The ziti was good. Justin's chili. You had Justin's potatoes. Okay, soup so yeah, recently. we all know about Justin's chili, don't we, La- ladies and gentlemen? The great Justin's chili. We love Justin's. It's chili. the best chili I've ever had. It is. Had. It is the best chili I've ever had. I think the reason it's so good is because it's it's sweet. He makes he makes it. It's pretty sweet compared to your average chili, and that's what I like. He makes it sweet. I and, speak of the devil. There and he is. The thing that I appreciate about the chili, which he's he's done extra for me. Come on, buddy. That he's started to do extra in the chili. At least for me, I don't think he he'll. I don't think this is like a signature thing you started doing in your chili. It's usually just if I'm eating, is you just extra. Big fat meat chunks. No, is that something uh, that you started to do like consistently? Because remember, there was a point where like I told you I really you, liked them, yes, and you added I, more. I do, I do add extra for you, but I kind of liked it too. So, but yeah, uh, it, it kind of the market I get the meat from. They never do just a pound. Yeah, they always do a little over a pound. So hey, I'm not nice, complaining. Nice. Some days, some days I'll find one where it's like one and a half pounds, and I'll get two of those, so it's three pounds of meat. Yeah. Other days I'll keep it a little lighter. I had the chili for the second time. Finally, we we all hung out at Justin's apartment. We watched District Nine. Great, had, phenomenal film. Chili. Great movie. That is Christopher a movie. Richard. Reeves. Reeves. Christopher Reeves. No, no, no. What's his name? Christopher something. Fucking, Jefferson. Fucking prawns. Christopher Jefferson. What's the name of the dude? Johnson? Christopher, Christopher Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, the, uh, the the alien. Yeah. Christopher Reeves. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I recently had the the pleasure of being the first one to try Justin's. Second dish is potato bacon chowder. Is that what it is? Yeah. And it's, okay. Now, I know this white boy can cap sometimes, but I'm not capping when I say. You have been known to cap. I, I, I have been known to cap, but I am not capping, okay? When I say, and Justin will back me up here. I, I will. Ca- I came over. I will. We put on a little Interstellar. Mm. We watched that movie. Great movie. Lo- lovely movie. And the my favorite part about Interstellar is when they go. Well, what's there's a classic line where it's like those aren't waves. No, there's that one which is great where it's like the the fourth dimension is love or something. Oh yeah, it's love. That gets me every time. I shed a tear. Me too. Earth. The fourth Earth. dimension is love. The, the, it's love is what binds us and connects us through time and space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's fucking name. Uh, but yeah, I had Justin's. Uh, potato, yeah, potato chowder, and let me tell you something. I'm not capping, okay? I filled my bowl to the brim. That shit was overflowing. It was with actually, and I sat down on the couch and I, I was like, oh, I don't. I was like, Easy. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to finish this because you know, guys, I got a small stomach. You know, yeah, it's a tiny ass. Little you, ass you, ass, you, you know? barely eat much, and if you do eat, it's, it's dog shit food. Exactly. So I have, I you have literally will eat dog shit. Yeah. sometimes. Well, okay. Midnight, midnight cravings. You, you guys, like the crunch. You make sure it's dried out by the sun first. And you guys give me shit for it. And yeah, I think you give enough shit to yourself because okay. you're eating it. But what I'm saying, well, that's a good pun, but what I'm saying is... It's not just a good pun. It's also true, and I think it's something you should follow through with, and you should stop eating dog shit. What I'm saying shit. is don't knock it till you try it. It's one of those things that I... You guys make fun of me for it, and in I would have made fun of myself a year ago. you ever wonder why ago. you can't sleep at night? Probably. Because it's not because Do you I know the dog proteins shit? that are in dog shit? What about the proteins in dog shit, Justin? They're going to keep you awake. No, they're not. There's no dog shit stimulant naturally, effects of dog shit. No, dog shit has melatonin in it, and if you have too much melatonin, your body stops making melatonin. That's why you can't fucking sleep. If you're Because now you're so addicted to eating dog shit. I'm not addicted to eating dog shit. if you don't eat shit. enough, you have to start eating more now so that you get... It's fine. Back to Interstellar. I eat the whole bowl of, chili, er, yeah. of chowder, okay? Yeah. And that's a big fucking deal for me. Then guess what I did? I said, Justin, I'm not capping. I'm gonna have seconds. I go over to that fucking big bowl of slop, and I fill it all the way to the brim again, dude. That's fucking fantastic. And you know what? I'm I, so proud of you. What did I say when I sat down with that bowl, Justin? What did I say? You said, "Damn, I might have, I might have gotten a little too crazy with the seconds, but we'll I said see. I might have overshot yeah. this one." Yeah. But he finished it. What did I do? He did. He finished it, and he didn't just like finish it where there was a little puddle left. He no. he licked that shit clean. Like like I like I tilted the bowl and I used the spoon to like scoop like. 
the the last remaining spoonful like like he did so let it be known ladies and gentlemen this 26 year old grown man 27 right 27 thank sorry sorry so sorry much, sorry man. 27 year old grown 26. man thank you you, that's true. Actually, I got told I got called twenty five recently, which made me feel nice. And you just really? turned twenty nine. I know. You do look young, uh, Luke. Actually, put some fanfare up. Put some 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 congratulations music and, and a little something on screen for me. This twenty seven year old man had two bowls of chowder. <laughs> yep. Yay! Two bowls of you, chowder. You heard this epic narrative explained. That's right. In grave detail. Luke, can you also put Bergy on the screen for a second? No, don't. Don't. You don't have to. I think. I think Bergy's. No. I, I don't I think want, we have I the rights Bergie. to. We don't have the That's rights to Bergy. I want Bergy. They have Bergy as a licensed character, and they've sold okay. sold plushies of Bergy. Well, we can't. Luke can make his own version of Bergy. Please. I, I don't think. Luke I, can I've do always that. wanted to tell someone to put Bergy on screen. Well, Bergy's the editor, Ber Bergy's Bergie not on? our character to put on screen. Especially uh, the advertisers specifically, they then don't. A, they probably know, put, wouldn't put, put appreciate couple, Bergie. Put a couple on. googly eyes on a ham sandwich and put it on screen on a PNG of a ham sandwich. That it, looks too much like. Uh, oh, there's a there's a character that looks very similar. It's to that. Sandy the Sandwich. I was gonna say Hammy. Okay, yeah. we're, it's Hammy Hamilton. the Sandwich. Hamilton the the ham sandwich. Okay, it's Hamilton the Sandwich. Sorry, it's great shit, man. Should I leave? I mean, if you want, but you can stay if you if you okay. want. I'd like to. Yeah, man. You okay. can stay as long as you want. Sitting. I've been editing, so I kind of wanted to. We do need to go to ads, though. We got to take a little commercial break, and I have to drain the main vein. If you know what I mean. You gonna go jerk off? Yeah, I have to, yeah, to okay, ejaculate. Yeah, when we get back, more Matt, more Ryan, and dare I say it, more Justin. More Justin. Yay. That's right. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like forgetting to mute yourself on Zoom and everyone hears you trash-talking your coworkers. It may just be a bit of harmless banter, but what happens if your boss overhears you talking about his receding hairline? Justin Matthew? Hmm? Internet service providers know every single website you visit. ISPs can sell this information to ad companies and tech giants who then use your data to target you. ExpressVPN reroutes your network data through a secure, encrypted tunnel so your ISP can't see or sell your online activity. So simple to use, just fire up the app and click one button. It's rated number one by CNET and Tech Radar. Also, might I add, I just want to throw this in there, fun fact. It works on phones, laptops, even routers. Yep. So everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can be protected. I love using ExpressVPN because it makes me feel safe. It makes me feel like there's... Uh, a, a big brother, which I've never had. I'm an only child. Well, I've had a, a, a step. I don't want to get into semantics, but it's like having an older brother that's there to beat up all the, the tech giant bullies, you know? That's a good visual, right? Protect your online privacy by visiting expressvpn.com slash supermega today. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash supermega. And you can get an extra three months for free. That's expressvpn.com slash supermega. yippee i -yo kaye mother... Mm. Sometimes I forget about what he's saying because it's like... I realize there's, it's just like... He goes so long with talking without giving you like a chance to like... You know, kind of refresh your memory and like keep up with the story. Do you think... So you kind of lose yourself and you start thinking that you're, you're, of your own separate story. And, do you think the reason why Matt talks so much is because he's so fond of his own voice? It's a good voice. I mean, there's a reason. He is going on tour. Isn't that more of like a pity thing? This is his second tour. But isn't it more of like a like a feeling sorry kind of thing? Or is it like, do people like listen to it? All I'm saying is, I mean, take this for what you will, Justin. This is his second tour. And this oh, tour, there's going to be lights that have multiple colors on it. Wait, seriously? Yep. So, he's, like, he's the budget has just... increased significantly on it. So, I feel like it's, uh... Okay. I think it's, I think it's gonna be hey. a little hit. What's up? What's hey, up, buddy? Dude? Monster Energy? What, what is this, Aaron Hansen? Yeah, dude. <sighs> How about a white monster for this white monster? <laughs> <laughs> That's Aaron Hansen White. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> That's what they renamed the drink. <laughs> Aaron Hansen got me and Ryan on the on the white monster train. Yeah, and so it monster is the stereotypical finally, the like Aaron Hansen white monster. This is the stereotypical like white guy that punches the drywall drink, and it's good. 
That's like, the thing. I feel it's like no you sugar. Drink, you drink white monster, you definitely own at least one dirt bike. Did you guys have dirt did you guys have I a never, dirt bike? Never had a no. dirt bike or Dude, ATV or anything like when that. When I was growing up, I gauged someone's worth by if they had a dirt bike or not. Like if you had a dirt bike, you would have hated the, me you then. You were the coolest fucking person ever. Yeah, I grew up in the suburbs. Yeah, same. I, guess, I grew up in a neighborhood, so Well I, well, okay. I grew up in like half suburbs for like the starting bit, apartments, and then it was mostly like just kind of like suburban. How long did you live in the, the trash dump for? <coughs> a few years. Mm. I grew up in the burbs. Yeah. No. Yeah. You didn't uh live in the you didn't live in a dump at all, did you? Uh when the 2008 housing crisis hit, there was about a two month period mm. uh where our house got foreclosed. Uh but my parents were able to Basically, talk to the bank and get it. Hey, it's not funny, Ryan. It's a very... I'm not laughing. I don't know why you would say that. This is serious, actually. Dude, like, when people's houses get foreclosed, that's no <laughs> thing to joke about, dude. <laughs> My mom's car got repoed, too. Like, you didn't have a... I, I didn't have a way to get to school. It's not funny, dude. 2000... Wait, wait, wait. Your mom, the, the, the teacher... Yeah. <laughs> got her car repoed? Yeah, she couldn't make the payments on it. Oh. And then she would come home late at night after just working all day. She'd she'd probably have to like she'd get up multiple times, like stir awake, go to the restroom. Let's say sit on the toilet, ketchup packets yep. explode on the back of her. Well, legs. luckily not this period because we didn't have a toilet because the house did get foreclosed. So okay. it was there was a bucket, but I did get her one time. I put the little poppers that you throw under the bucket, and when she went to sit on the bucket to take mm, her her three a.m. shit, uh, it went. Classic. Pfft. It, it, they went pop and it scared her. We need to have a we need to have a bucket month here so we can like save some cost on like water and shit. All right, guys, July is bucket month, so <laughs> shitting and piss straight in the bucket. Well, no, no actually, toilet flushes. It'd be better for the environment because we get fertilizer. Exactly. We could use it for the plants for a loose garden. Or we, we could spread it, make... it all over our neighbors' gardens. <laughs> We're doing you guys a favor. <laughs> Go over to the neighbors' yard. <laughs> With buckets of buckets fucking dish hot you know feces. How much, you know how much this shit costs? Come on. <laughs> just pour it on their lawn. It's expensive, dude. <laughs> just pouring just human shit all over the neighbors <laughs> in their flower bed, all over. That's just like been their, sitting in the sun. The tomatoes they're growing <laughs> that they eat, just putting our shit all over it. Like, <laughs> what the hell are you doing? <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to be good neighbors here. Jesus, we're trying to be good neighbors. And we're Help trying to be en environmentally friendly. You know, good good fertilizer. That's a lot of cows. A lot of cows. It's greenhouse gas. You Come know, on. a lot of people nowadays. Everyone's up in arms about climate change, and here we are actually trying to make a difference. And you're getting it takes pissed off. A lot of work and a lot of time to make human fertilizer. Also, it takes like a day or two for just a tiny little bit that you add to a bucket. If we're going around spreading buckets of shit on their lawn, yeah. they better be fucking grateful because that's at least a week or two of work. No, exactly. Plus, and the longer it sits in the bucket, the stronger it's going to... to think about all the nutrients in, yeah. like, uh, our combined diets. We each have a very different palate and a very different day-to-day mm -hmm. -day eating schedule and just eating plan in general. Yeah. I, I think grass. I think that a combination of all three of our diets w would create a super diet that would probably help with... Uh, certain hybrids of plants that are that are more rare to to, to crop up from from just I guess I, I'm thinking harvest moon types. You plant red flower to blue flower. Maybe with human shit, you'll get a purple. What if the secret to bringing back all these endangered species of plants is just buckets of our shit? Well, there's only one way to find out. That's true. We do have a Home Depot bucket like right in the hallway over there. We, can we just throw. start now. And I'm feeling. I did take a big shit right before this podcast, That's but right, that was my second of the day. And if I've already had two this early into the day, it means there is going to be a third probably. I, I don't know why I thought this would be funny. I don't know. It just, but we all shit into this bucket. We don't use it for this idea of putting it on our neighbor's lawn, but we secretly all three shit into a bucket until it's filled. And then just like, char like task Jim with like, hey, we got a bucket uh, of paint that we need you to like, <laughs> like transport somewhere. And so like he has to carry, like it's heavy, maybe like little air horns for the chances of him like freaking out and spilling it. <laughs> Just shit in a bucket and then make Jim transport it. Don't tell him it's shit. Be like, hey, can you, can you move this? Yeah, sure, man. Yeah. A oh, big dude. Oh, this is huge. This is heavy, man. He's strong though. He's oh, <laughs> It's fertilizer. <laughs> Just tell them it's fertilizer.
Like, hey, we're going to start planting some crops. And the- Can you move our fertilizer? It's just <laughs> a bucket of human For shit. Luke's garden, dude. <laughs> Luke's been that, working hard on his garden. He's going, growing peppers. Luke, Luke has been working very hard on that his is, garden. That is for my, my garden, yeah. That's for my peppers. <laughs> for sure. For, for, my, for sure. My, for sure. My Luke impression. Yeah, for sure. Luke, did you like that impression I did of you? I'm sure he did. That's that's no cap. For sure. On God. For sure. <laughs> just, he starts. <laughs> Guys, so, well, I, uh, so Livy, Livy just rizzed up Baby Gronk. Yeah. For sure. Baby Gronk's the new Drift King. For sure. He loves, uh, I don't know, Baby baby Diggs. Yeah, dude, Baby, baby Diggs. Who's... A new challenger is approaching. A new challenger has been approached. In fact, baby Diggs? in fact, Baby Gronk is going around with a picture of Baby Diggs asking where he at. Have you seen? And I don't know where he at. Do you know where he at? I don't, I don't know, know where, where he at. at. I don't know where he at. I don't know. Baby Diggs. Yeah, dude. Where have you been, Justin? You been living under a rock? Well, who's the who's the new Drip King? Well, Baby Gronk was who's, the new Drip who's King. Who's the current Drip King? Baby Gronk, but Baby Diggs might be coming for his, his exactly. Well, the his thing crowd. is. Lizzie Riz Livy. Baby Gronk. Livy raised. Livy. Sorry, I, the, I did the same thing because of Riz and yeah, Livy. Livy rizzed Baby Gronk apparently, right? Which makes Gronk the Riz King. Ah, uh, I see. But I heard somewhere that Livy cheated on Baby Gronk. No, what? no, 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 no. Baby Gronk cheated on Livy. What? And I'm not talking sexually. I'm talking. Because Baby Gronk promised Livy that he would play at LSU, and then guess what his ass was doing? Touring other colleges. Nuh-uh. Yeah. You can't fucking do that. No, so Livy is... Apparently, it's actually all bullshit, and he's just some kid that his dad is just uh, kind of forcing... His dad is rich and really, really wants to vicariously live through his well, famous baby, son. Baby Gronk is only five foot five. I mean, he's the same height as Jim. Yeah, like, but like, is, is he actually? No, I don't though. like. I think is he actually like? Holy shit! This kid is just good at football. Is he like he's he's a good child football player, but like once he gets into high school, he's just gonna be. He's probably not bad at football, but I think that at the end of the day, all it is is his dad has a lot of money and his dad is connected, and his dad is trying to make his son famous. I saw a bunch of shit on Twitter about like his dad. And the dad controls the Twitter account, and he was having meltdowns last week. I feel de- I feel bad for Baby Gronk. Yeah, I do too, honestly, because like he's a kid. He's in fourth grade, dude. Let kids be kids. Also, like having I'm guessing his dad to do this type of shit has to have some sort of an inflated ego of himself. His dad right? has a huge ego. So yeah. it just it's it's it sucks that like you know the person that's that you know he's. You would think he would lean on to trust is, from my point of view, taking advantage of them. So no that, offense to Papa Gronk. So that Papa Gronk, can, <laughs> so that Papa Gronk can make make everyone, make Mundo money. Daddy Gronk. Everyone just clicked on. <laughs> or they just fast forwarded two minutes? Okay, but also <laughs> if so, first of all, <laughs> when we're recording this, Baby Gronk is already irrelevant. So by the time we this already comes mentioned out, him in a previous episode, I know. Too. And by the time this comes out, he's going to be even more relevant. And then for people Dude. that end up watching this episode <sighs> in like 2035, <laughs> like in the 2030s, but people that's gonna listening are going to be like, "What the again. fuck are they that's talking gonna about?" Funny it's going to come back around. Yeah. Well, in 2035, Baby Gronk will be in college. Hold up, Matt. Sorry, sorry, audience. I just got to check something. Matt, you have three drinks currently. I do. Yeah. This one. Feel how heavy this is, Justin. That's at least halfway. The water, I like that you're drinking a lot of water. Yeah. This one's almost, this one pretty much is just spit inside of it, like backwash. Yeah. The monster. Oh, I've only had a couple sips of that. It's still pretty full. I want to make sure. You're going to have to finish. What are you, the secret drink police? I was just making sure you were at least going to finish one of the three drinks you have. You know, Matt, there's. Pass me that coffee, man. There's just enough coffee in here to where you could pour it into the monster and top it off. Ooh, a little Java surprise. No, I'm not doing that. It would ruin both drinks for me. Probably tastes really good. Could be good. <laughs> they do good. make coffee. Give me that monster. You, give me that cup. You, you could be the first person to find out <coughs> an episode of the Super Mega Cast. You're like a fucking scientist. Watch this. Watch this. Ready? Bro's yep. making his potions and Will brews. that mix well with... Never mind. See, maybe the ratio is is off, but we're going to try it. It's going to make it... Cool. Matt just poured uh, some, some uh, Aaron Hansen white monster uh, and white mixed monster. it with some... Uh, Starbucks cold brew? No, wait, what is yeah, it? Yeah, it's a nitro, uh, sweet cream cold brew. So... In a can. So those at home can give hey, it a wait, try. Wait, wait, wait. I, I got a little drinking game I learned from Chris. Huh. Alright. Smells like, uh, it actually smells like nail polish remover. 
You're used to that smell, smell aren't you, Matt? Polishing, oh, that? Uh, polishing your nails all the time? Dude, I don't polish my fucking nails, Ryan. <laughs> Come off it. Prove it. Do, uh, show us your nails. I don't need to. Do they look clean? Nah, they're actually kind of dirty today. See the, see under that one? My nails are dirty, Stalling, too. Dude. We like to drink with Matt Watson because Matt Watson's our mate. And when we drink with Matt Watson, he finishes in eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ah! How you sh you shook your head no, as in like I don't I'm not gonna chug this. Could you explain to us ah, the I had a uh, good sips of it? Could though. you could you explain to the audience members because you just took a si sip of that concoction the the experience of the introduction of it, the, its hints and notes, its lingerings, and then how it sits with you. Could you could you give us a a review if if you would? Yeah. I'll let you look. Actually, Justin, if you look at that, there's different layers within it. Do yeah, you it's, see? Cur it's curdling. It's curdling. No shit. Look, it's it's actually curdling. Well, I believe it because you put a milk product in with the fucking monster energy. Bro, made the tummy rumbly five thousand. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was gross. Um, uh, it tastes like when chocolate. it first entered your mouth, it was just uh, a cold oh. substance. Yeah, you were just like, you know, God, might be fine. Stinks. It tastes like uh, <laughs> it's not that bad, God. Justin. I gag easy. It's not that you bad. Know all about that. Yeah, come on, man. Hey. Uh, no, so it you. it tasted um, like uh, Yoohoo a little bit. It has a very chocolatey flavor, even though there's no chocolate in it. The <laughs> coffee mixed with the monster just kind of has it's a chocolate. Funny. Yeah, it's so. Got what a, what put you off to having more if it was just kind of like a chocolatey, really sweet, and uh, it tastes like drinking Yoohoo mixed with water that's even sweeter, with like some lemon juice. So added. it's just too sweet. Yeah, you want to try it? No. You try it, Justin? See, it's not the worst. It's not good, but it's not the worst. Aye, right, man, I can't believe you did that, dude. I'm proud of you. Justin that really wasn't... Justin earns a golden spell. star. Matt, you have the stickers? I left them at home today. It does have a really gross you who aftertaste. Rega I'm gonna actually... Regardless, wait. you're still gonna get a golden star for that. Thank you will you. get a golden star, but I'll, it'll have to be when I bring the stickers next week, because that's on me. I meant to bring the, the star stickers today for Justin, but I... I'm sorry. I did that under the assumption it's fine. Well, you weren't um, you weren't aware that he was going to earn a golden star today. I know, but I should have just brought them anyway. That's just going to make me have a panic attack in like two hours. I'm going to be like sitting down like... <laughs> We've already talked through it, so hopefully, you know, it doesn't crop up and cause problems. I, not I the, feel like... Not the golden... No, just the caffeine. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm going to be sitting and just like... <laughs> does know? caffeine give you anxiety? Yeah, it does. You know, that... So caffeine used to never... Give me anxiety. Only in like the last two months, it started doing that to me, and uh, it's it's not it's not very fun. I don't Just get your heart rate up. Yeah, it gets my. What are you doing, Justin? Stop! You're arousing me. It uh, my friend. It gets get yeah. It gets my heart rate up. I get that like, I get that physical anxiety where it's like the the hot buzz in my. Do you see the hair on my arm standing up after you kiss my neck like that, Justin? <laughs> like that's involuntary. Yeah, I know. I'm not aroused. I'm not turned on, but it's like that. Just it. <sighs> Did, it had that effect. It's making it's making you uncomfortable that your your younger employee is putting moves on you and putting you in this the spot. Would you say uncomfortable or would you say excited? I wouldn't say excited. <laughs> okay. But I wouldn't say uncomfortable. Because you're also close friends. We're close friends, yeah. See, when when he's doing this, I don't see this as an employee doing this to me. I see this as a as a close friend, maybe getting a little too close. You can knock uh, getting a little too close. <laughs> yeah. Uh same as, you know, when I lay the moves on Justin, uh, after we've had a couple Mike's Hard Lemonades, uh, uh you know, after we had some chowder watching Interstellar and maybe half of Mike's, I, uh, I don't want him to see it as, oh, this is a weird power dynamic where my boss is, is sexually, you know, coming on to me. It's more of, this is my close friend well, who happens to be my boss. You're both off the clock. Yeah, so. That's true. When, yeah. when we're on Justin's couch at his apartment, you know. I'm not. I'm not anyone's maybe. boss. You're on Justin time. Well, maybe I am the boss because you know someone likes you know <laughs> when I'm the boss sometimes. <laughs> but um, sometimes I like when you're the boss. But I haven't cracked a mics in a while. I haven't cracked I haven't a mics. Either. The last time I cracked a mics would have been I did a stream like a couple months ago. I drank a six pack of mics on Dude. stream. I felt disgusting. So uh, there's this guy that I followed forever named Kital Sakurai. And he, uh, he's one of the, like, directors and writers and producers of the Eric Andre show since the very beginning. And, uh, he, he's really good at what he does. I really like this guy. But I recently saw 
he just did a crazy Mike's Hard Lemonade commercial, like a funny one. Like I saw him post it on Instagram the other day. So I'm like, so now what? Mike's all of a sudden is reaching out to funny people to do ads for them. And but they didn't reach funny. out to us. We're but, funny. But we're the ones we? but we reached out to them. We're the ones that put Mike's on the fucking map. Yep. I, I responded to Mike's. They were posting a bunch of their merch that they had, and I responded to them asking if they would if they would give me the sunglasses. Their tweet had like a hundred likes. Mine got over fifteen hundred likes. And they ignored me. I know they saw it. No likes. They didn't like your shit. No. They ignored me too every time I've tried to do anything. Mike's has liked my tweets. Sorry, I didn't mean to. It's okay. It's okay. Sorry. Mike's has liked my tweets twice. And I so they've they acknowledged you. They, they've responded to me once, but it was never involving collaboration. None of that. Yeah. I'm dead serious. Time. Like, if Mike's would let us direct a commercial for them, we would fucking... It would it would actually look good. Like we would do a good ass job. Like we would we would get a legit crew for it and everything. And we, it would be a good commercial. We have at least made mics fifty dollars, at least from more going uh, from our p- from our from our from our own pockets. Definitely more than that. Oh, oh yeah. from our own pockets, at least three hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. you, know? you know, probably more than that. <laughs> so we used to have mics stacked in the company fridge. My brain kind of does that thing now, where it's like. Think about early days, you know, you're a caveman, you see like this fruit kind of looks funny, you're like maybe I'll maybe I won't. That's kind of like what Mike's is to me right now. It's like I see I I see, I, I see it right now. It's like I'm good. I'm fine. How are you good on okay, Mike's? Okay, that I I want to say that what Ryan just said does not reflect Super Mega as a company. Those are his own beliefs and views. So if anyone from Mike's is listening, I love a a, a cold but hard let mics. me let me also just ask you, just because you're not feeling mics now doesn't mean you never felt mics in the past. You no, mics. no, of course not. You, oh, Ryan. you love a cold mics, right? You but remember, just not right now. I remember having uh, getting mic'd up with the boys, of course. Oh, what about what about when you just and like I... I remember hooking up with the boys in the past? Oh, firing up. When's the, the last time we fired up the hook? Oh, it's been a while. Up with the boys too. It's kind of the same the same vibe for me. Yeah, Ryan knows a thing or two about hooking up with boys. <clears throat> like, come on. <laughs> Uh, but basically, uh, I remember when, when I was like 21, you were 22, 23, and we lived in that apartment together where we started Super Mega. And I remember in our fridge, you could open that door and seldom would there be no Mike's Hard Lemonades. (laughs) (laughs) I thought it was, I thought it was Red's Apple Ale for you. It it was, was. it was was like Red's Apple Ale, Angry Orchard, (laughs) uh... Then I turned 24 and, and I then, started drinking <clears throat> beer. And Strongbow. And then after Strongbow was Stella Artois Cider. You're slow. It's actually really funny because you're like, you're slowly moving up. Because early 20s, you, lo- you love those sugary sweet things. <laughs> yep. But then as you get a little older in your 20s, you start moving on to more, more drier stuff. Oh, you remember those fucking dessert wines we oh got? Oh my God, dude. I don't think I could even have a sip of that now. I like, But you remember back then we were like... Mmm, this is so sweet and delicious. It's like, oh yeah, it was like drinking honey, dude. If I take, if I took a (laughs) sip of that shit now, I just, (laughs) it's almost unbearable. I wonder if we could find it. It was Hungarian dessert wine. (laughs) I want to try this. You would like. You you would probably. It's like a Capri Sun, Justin. You would. You would. Justin would love it. You would beam through the roof. Yeah. See, I grew up. Where do I go to get it? How do I get it? It's, it was go to Hungary, probably. It was a Hungarian dessert wine that was like yellowish. It was you like gold. Go to fucking Hungary? You guys haven't been to Hungary? Yes, we have. That's where we got it. I was hungry a couple hours ago. But... <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. But we ate. Yeah. yeah. But not we like the, the. We did eat. Yeah. Oh, we ate. Not like that. How they say it. Oh, but we, we d- ate. But we ate. We we actually ate. We ate lunch. Right. Well. And we also ate lunch. Yeah. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Uh, stop it, dude! <laughs> Knock it off. But yeah, that that shit was was sickly sweet. Yeah, like that was. Is this a fire hazard? Having all these lighters here next to a neon sign? Could that? I don't know. Is it? I don't know. I Probably just... not, dude. I mean, it's just lighter fluid next to a to a neon sign. It's pretty sick, Justin. What happens if you if you light that lighter and put it up to the neon tubes and just hold the lighter up to it? <laughs> no. Can't do it. Come on, man. Much of a pussy. Don't be a puss. No, I'm a pussy. Dude. Don't be a puss, Honestly. puss. Justin, once in your life, just don't be a pussy. I don't want to kill you guys. What if it explodes and the shrapnel goes into your head? People die every day. Like, do you that, want that to be you? Thousands of people. You want it to be you? 
Justin, thousands of people die every second. Regardless of if it's what I want, if it's what happens, I have no control over that. Do you That's guys, fate. You're the one with the lighter. It's fate. Do you guys fear death, or do you think you think about it and you're like, I get anxious sometimes thinking about it, but yeah. then, but then I also, uh, I also remember that everyone d has to go through it, and mm. it's like, it's not like I'm alone in this endeavor. It's two things in life unavoidable: death and taxes. And for us, Classic. bitches. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm scared of death. I mean, everyone's scared of death. I think to some degree, but not um, me. you're not. Nope. Death's scary. You know why death is scary? Because it's the only it's the only thing that is inevitable that we have no clue what happens. Mm. You don't you don't know what happens. Never have an answer. Well, you go to heaven. Or heaven. That's one theory. That's another theory. A Christ theory. What about purgatory. Hmm. That would suck. Being in purgatory would actually fucking just blow. I would no, rather be in purgatory than hell, I yeah. think. Purgatory would I'd rather suck. be bored it, it out of my fun. mind than You'd tortured. just be fucking bored. Purgatory is like its own version of hell. It's, it's just, except it's just boring. What do you think your version of hell would be? Like if you were in hell? I honestly think the classic hell of being burned alive for eternity would be pretty bad. I think for me, I'd be having the feeling of drowning all the time. That's what I was and I'd thinking. I'd be like in just total pitch black darkness, can't see anything. Oh, you just unlocked a fear of like, yeah, like that moment. Like if I if I was just in water drowning, but also I knew that there was like a great white shark just somewhere circling. That's the great deceiver. Yep, he's That's keeping Satan. an eye on me. The, the great white Satan. Which I mean. Speaking of shark attacks, you boys saw that video. The Egyptian, the Egyptian one? Yeah. Yeah, that was nuts. No. What Egyptian one? The you Egypt didn't see that shark attack video that was going around? Was this like last week or something? Yeah. Oh, maybe. It was you, crazy. Well, you, you probably showed it to me and I'm just not remembering. It was, uh, it's the first like fucking shark attack that was, it's not the first shark attack that was caught on camera, but it's the first one that I feel like was publicly put out that you can... You understand exactly what's going on yeah. when you're watching it. It's like it's it, not like oh it's you from can the kind beach. Of, it's from yeah. the shoreline and the guy is is you know maybe like 50 60 feet out and he's getting attacked by a by a some type of shark. He was at a, a tiger shark. Tiger shark. Yeah. Tiger he, sharks he did are not the make most it. aggressive, aren't they? they yeah, cuz they find like license plates and shits in the like stomach. Like they'll eat anything. Bro, imagine being a shark and just getting so fucking <clears> pissed <throat> off that there's a license plate in front of you that you just tear into it. <laughs> Hey, I, I read the fuck are you doing here? You know? I read that the reason there's been an increase in shark attacks in that area is because uh, apparently a lot of ships that go through the Suez Canal that have livestock, when they have like sick or dying livestock, they'll just throw it over the edge. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> just into the water. And then the sharks get it. So so the sharks have now become like bloodthirsty because they're you they're getting Bro meat now. What so is, then, now they're like, they're more, you know, so now when they're swimming around and there's humans, they're more like, mmm. Imagine being a pig, and you just have like a slight cough, you're like, <coughs> and like uh, some dude just, uh, wait, wait, wait! Yeah. <laughs> like, just like a slight cold that bro throws you over the edge and you're stuck in an ocean. Dude, that would be cringe if that happened to me. That would be- uh, If I was a pig and got thrown overboard, I'd be livid. Dude, imagine uh, be fucking squealing, dude. Dude, imagine if a ship got stuck in the Suez Canal. <laughs> ha! Ugh. Let's go to ads. <clears throat> I gotta pee. Again? I'm hydrating. He's drinking a lot. Did you finish the coffee? No. Well, maybe you should finish the coffee and then go to ads to pee. Oh, I think that shoot. I think that would be fair. Okay, let's do that. He's finishing the coffee. He's swallowing. Uh, he could have. He he didn't decide to take it all in one gulp. He did one big gulp and then a smaller gulp to finish it off. He is swallowing I, the I last kinda, bit of the coffee at this I, moment. I choke when I choke. I, I kind of yeah. I was gonna something, say something like something in my throat just goes. <clears throat> like if I try to chug, my throat always just like it's like I get a knot in it. It's okay. Like, okay. So I I choke easy. Now we're gonna go yes. to commercial breaks. Yeah. Man, what helps me feel my best? Well, my best friend Ryan, of course. But when I don't have my best friend Ryan to snuggle, the second thing that makes me feel the best is my very comfortable pair of MeUndies. MeUndies believes that comfort is about more than what's touching your skin. It's about feeling comfortable in your skin. They have dozens of fun prints from donuts to superheroes and great colors from bolds to classics that match your unique style and help you feel your best. 
MeUndies also has tons of other apparel, like insanely soft joggers and hoodies that bring more fun to your laziest days. I wear MeUndies every single day. I'm wearing a pair right now. They are so soft. My favorite prints are, I just like the solid color ones. I got a whole rainbow of different uh, MeUndies uh, pairs, and they are so soft. They're, they're so, so soft. And you can get matchy matchy and comfy comfy between you and your partner in crime with Me Undies. You can match underwear, hoodies, onesies, and more. There's even dog hoodies for man's best friend. Me Undies also digs that you're working on your fitness, so they wanted to provide you with super soft activewear with their new Move Me collection. It's moisture wicking, quick drying, breathable, and medium compression to provide support. Get more than just junk in your mailbox with a Me Undies membership. Choose a new pair of undies, socks, or bralette each month to grow your collection. You'll also save up to 30% on all the Me Undies snuggly softness you can handle. Plus, early access to special deals and new products. To get 25% off your first order, plus free standard shipping, visit MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. Remember, if you're not satisfied, your purchase is on MeUndies. That's 25% off your first order at MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. This episode of the Super Mega Cast is brought to you by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life we're faced with tough choices, and the path forward isn't always clear. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life. So you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Mm -hmm. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. Recently, I was in a situation that tested my values. I was in a World Series checkers tournament, and I was so close to the winning move. I looked up at my opponent and noticed he was sweating, looking over at his family, who I know needed the money from this tournament more than I did because I already have super mega. This gave me a pit in my stomach because if I let him win, does that make me a cheater? And if I choose to win because I'm a better checkers player, does that make me a bad person knowing that that outcome directly affects his family? So I called for a bathroom break to call up my therapist on BetterHelp. Luckily, I had previously made an appointment. I talked it over with my therapist and it helped me come to the understanding that winning isn't really what matters. It's how we can positively affect each other's lives. So I'd like to think I made the right choice in giving him his win. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash SuperMega today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash SuperMega. Here at Super Mega, if there's one thing we're known for, it's being huge advocates of a clean butthole. The climate between your cheeks is about to get capital M muggy. You know what I'm talking about, fellas. And ladies. Swamp ass plus dry toilet paper don't mix, resulting in shreds of toilet paper all up in your business. Avoid that sticky sitch by switching to Hello Tushy Bidet. That's right, say goodbye to a disgusting dirty butthole. Hello Tushy Bidet cleans your bum two times better than wiping and prevents poo particles from spreading to your hands and everything you touch. Ew! The Hello Tushy Bidet washes your bum with fresh water for a way better clean than toilet paper. You simply spray and pat dry and attaches to your existing toilet. You don't need an electrician, you don't need a, you know, a plumber, it installs in less than eight minutes. Think about that, guys. Less than eight minutes for a endlessly clean bottle. And you can cut down your toilet paper use by 80%, saving money in paper waste. I use a tushy bidet and my butthole's pretty clean. I wish I could show you guys to show you how clean it is, but alas. And every Hello Tushy Bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. With over 100,000 five-star reviews, see why millions of people already love Hello Tushy. Go to hellotushy.com forward slash supermega and use promo code supermega to get 10% off plus free shipping on your first bidet order. That's hellotushy.com slash supermega for 10% off. Get that butthole clean. What are your, like, do you have, like, a preference with shoes? Do you have, like, a favorite kind of shoe? Right now, it's something where it gives me back, back support, very cushiony. I mean more of, like, a style. Do you have, like, a favorite kind of style shoe? No. Or you just don't really care too I, much? I don't, I don't care. Usually, I just keep it, like, a, all black, black and gray. I noticed this one's untied, too. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's weird. How'd that happen? I don't know. I don't know. They're just, like, they're just, like, untied. How'd that get in there? I'm, I've always been like a, a Crocs man and a, a Chucks man. I love me some Converse. Ooh. I love some Chucks. I gotta, I gotta get another pair, man. I, 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 I used to, I used to be rocking the, the white high top Chucks, and I, it's been a while since I've done that. You know, Chucks are great, dude. Chucks are classic. Vans, I like Vans. I like Kelly Vans likes too. Vans a lot. I liked Vans, probably in like middle school. It's definitely and a middle I, school shoe. I, yeah, I stopped wearing them. It's a middle school shoe, but you can they're just uncomfortable wear it for me. 
They're yeah, they're skate shoes. Skate they're uncomfortable shoes as fuck. Yeah, I mean, Converse are the same. They're they're very flat. They got like that much support. See, I like but, stuff with support. I like dude, sneakers. I only I, the main reason I like Chucks is just because I mean they look cool, but the classic. It's because of Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, Johnny Knoxville always wears Chucks. And I always thought he was the coolest motherfucker growing up, so it's, I started it's, wearing Chucks. It's not because he really liked Chuck from Better Call Saul. He's a big Chuckhead, yeah. I'm a bit of a Chuckhead. Well, until he got fucking schooled with that, that battery that was in his pocket. It made him look like a fucking moron. It was a lot of chicanery. I'm a, I'm a Reeboks man. For the, okay. last, for the last, like... Is that a Better Call Saul character? <clears throat> yeah, Reeboks man. <laughs> uh, no, for for the last like I don't know, you could probably look at videos going back like four or five years. Just I just just white Reeboks, just very comfortable sneaker. I've had probably like six pairs now. I'm mixing them up. This one has some green on it. I need to get another pair because uh, I got some like blue shit on these for before Creator Clash when I was getting the chest mold made. The sticky plaster <sighs> fell onto the shoes. So. But dude, having like like colored stains on your shoes and stuff is actually sick. I like having stains and stuff on my shoes because I feel like it looks cool. I feel like it looks cooler when your shoes are worn, you know? Yeah, you know, Mama always said you could tell a lot about a person by their shoes. Where, where they they're going, going where, where they've been. been. Yeah, so. It's been a long time since I've seen Forrest Gump. We should watch Forrest Gump together sometime. We're down. We're going wa- to watch it at some point, I'm sure. For, for Uncle Sleepover. Oh, that's right. But oh. I'm a- I could watch that movie a million times. <laughs> like, I've seen I could Forrest- watch it two million times. Okay, dude. Well, I could watch it three million times. Then, four, gonna, four million okay, easy. I could literally watch it infinity times. I, I, I could watch it uh, infinity times a thousand. That doesn't. Need, that's still infinity. Dude. Yeah, but it's that's like but it's but it's still zero. a higher equated like infinity because it's like infinity, but like exacerbated. No, and, like not. if it could fit into like another dimension, no. it would it would go inside that other dimension. Infinity like, times so infinity is, is still so infinity. grand no, that it wrong. would be able to just travel through space and like love. It it could travel through space and time. It crosses dimensional boundaries. Exactly. Fuck. Well, I... I would... You know what? Chicken butt? Fuck, dude! I must have drank me about 15 white monsters. <laughs> I must have drank me about a million and a half white monsters. <laughs> <laughs> if they just made... <sighs> When are they going to remake Forrest Gump? Never. I've, I've thought Never. that. No, no. in our lifetime, though, you know it's going to happen. No. All these classic movies <laughs> in our away lifetime will get remade. From Forrest Gump. You can't fucking remake Forrest Gump. You they can't. Will. It'll be like 2050 when they do the it. The moment I saw it. them kind of like, I guess it makes more sense. They'll make them woke now. <clears throat> oh. You know what I've always wondered is if Pixar would ever go back and reanimate their first movies like Toy Story because they look so shit. They keep the audio the same. The movie... Each scene is the Toy exact Story same. remastered. Yes, because they do that with games. So I've always wondered if they would ever go back and redo those movies, because they have all the audio. They still have all the audio saved. But that's like so much work the studio would have to pay for for almost. I feel like with a game you get a little more of a return on but on that. With a movie like Toy Story, they're already doing. Li- they're going to do a live action Toy Story at some point, aren't they? That it's not out of it's not out of the question. I could see it being like a Disney Plus limited series type thing. They're doing Lilo and Stitch. That pisses me off. And Bambi now. (laughs) Bro, Bambi. Live action Bambi. Bambi's gonna watch his mom die like this. (laughs) Why don't they actually get creative with the animation, like uh, fucking Puss in Boots or the Across the Spider Verse that type of shit to, to print money. They, well, of course, they have to do the bare minimum. But of course, but, but what I'm saying is like, uh, oh, okay, yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, it's just like, who cares if what the studio wants? Why? Why isn't there some director, some like lead that's like gunning for like a creative vision that is not just live action something? Well, but he, then it's just like, yeah, it's because that shit takes more time and planning, the and the easiest, studios don't have time and planning. It's the easiest, easiest path. Yep. To making lots of money, and also the whole, the whole reason they're doing it is also because the copyright to 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 maintain the IP. So they're like, what's the easiest way to do this? Because even if they put like a creative, like a someone in charge, like if there was one person that had that creative vision, I guarantee they would get overridden because everything they would want to do would probably be a lot more time. And that's what I'm saying. It would take too much time and planning. Yeah. So they'd be like, like what I said. Dude, I saw. I saw this picture someone drew of uh, 
Sonic the Hedgehog. No, Justin, I don't want to see these pictures and, again. He showed me these earlier, dude. They're nasty. No, it's this one. Look, they have drew, you seen uh, Justin's contact picture in my phone? Yeah, they drew Sonic uh, in Spider Verse style. Ooh, to see what it would look like if Into they the did Sonic Verse. If they did an animated movie with Ooh. Sonic, it's, it's okay. pretty sick. We all did see Spider Verse. We did. We all did see Spider Verse. I had not seen the first movie, but I went with so, you guys and saw the second one. <laughs> I you didn't. E you didn't even prep. You know, and watch the first one the night before. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I gave him a rundown before we went. I got most of it. I kind of figured there were some things I was a little foggy on, but it was like I could put the I don't know why context I together of things. Figured you were gonna watch a recap video before we went on your phone. No, like like a five minute recap. I really thought he was gonna do that. But I feel like it, it kind of like if you look at it from the from the lens of like this is a spider another Spider Man adventure. You kind of get they they do enough. To fill you in on who's who. Yeah, it's like he what. there's there's a bunch of different dimensions with different Spider Mans, and then you know he's he's going through them. And bro said Spider Mans instead of Spider Man. <laughs> Dude, shut up, Justin. I had to bend you over my knee and give you give 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 you a spanking until your bottoms are red, I'd like cherry to see red. You try asshole. Yeah, I'd like to see you try too. I'm not gonna do it. He's gonna overpower me. Last time I tried to give him a spanking, he did the same thing. He overpowered me, and then I was the one that ended up getting the spanking, and that was no, don't horribly embarrassing. Short. You've got muscle. Everyone has muscle, Justin. I don't have anything compared to these fucking guns. I'm trying to like make him feel good about himself, and he's just shooting down every compliment I give him. It's never enough with you. This is like a serious thing. Yeah, I know. I'm working on it in therapy. Okay, so all right, let's move on from it. Um, have you guys seen any movies other than Spider-Verse lately that you really like, that really stuck with you? Yeah, I saw the movie, uh, Interstellar with my friend Justin. You, and you love Interstellar. Love it. One of my favorites. It's good. It's good. I do think it's kind of, it's pretty fucking corny. It's yeah. Love. It's love, Murph. It is, it's corny, Murph. but it's, it's so good. Murph. Dude, Matthew McConaughey's best movie is still Ed TV. Okay. I haven't still seen it. Still Ed TV. Haven't seen it. Ed TV is a movie about... Uh, a nice, fun-loving yokel man, uh, you know, a nobody, and True TV, the channel, is looking for someone that they can follow with cameras 24-7. They got cameras in his bedroom, they want to have cameras with him when he goes to work. It's like the Truman all Show that. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like the Truman and, Show. And uh, Ed, our fun-loving uh, protagonist, he gets followed by these cameras all the time, and, and Ellen's in it. Ellen is is like uh, one of the main the generous yeah Ellen the generous is in it as one of the main people that uh like the TV executives and but then Ed falls in love with a girl with Ellen no not with Ellen uh, he falls in love with a girl and she is very shy and she wants she to doesn't date want him, to be on it but she doesn't want to be on TV so Ed has to find a way to get out of the contract with True TV and it's there's so many hijinks really? that happen. Woody Harrelson's in it as, as his of brother? Of course. They, they're best they, friends. They, they might actually be brothers. Who, know, who knows? I honestly, Matthew McConaughey in The Beach Bum is, is one of his best roles, I think. I've never seen The Beach it's Bum. It's a really good movie. And you've not, you haven't even seen Ed TV and you're saying it's one of his best roles? One of. I didn't say it was his best role because I haven't seen Ed TV. Because it could be Ed TV. Matthew McConaughey in Contact is pretty funny. Where he plays the Christian. That's like the that's Bill Clinton's advisor. His Christian advisor. That's a good ass movie, actually. And his name is Joss. <laughs> <laughs> Can we watch Ed TV together? Sure, I'm down to watch it. It sounds fun. We should watch. I've it never TV. heard of it. It's a it's a it's a fun movie. Love Is that the TV. one where he? Ha I made you watch it. We've watched it together. We've never. Yes. I've never seen the the entirety of Ed's TV. <laughs> Ed's TV. Ed, whatever it is. <laughs> Ed's world. No, Ed TV. We watched it. Uh, never watched that together. Yes, we did because I remember it was one of my first trips that I ever came out here on. Trust me, I remember. Well, it might have been the first trip. I've never seen. I. I hate that when someone says that I've watched a movie that I've never seen. They're like, "We watched this." I'm like, "No, we didn't." I know. I, I, I know. have not seen this. I just had. I just had the correct Justin. You've that, seen that, that TV. That I've the shown evil. You TV. I just had the correct Justin. That the evil minions were in fact in Despicable Me Two and not in Despicable Me Three. Don't fucking bring up the minions. It was a mistake. All I'm saying is. We're gonna pick one person and uh, we're gonna put that person's life on television. That's all Ellen. Long. We never watched this. We've seen. This. We've never seen this, Justin. <laughs> I great, promise you, great you've never TV seen debate. this. I've it's, from the it's from the producer of Liar Liar. I've never seen that movie in my life. Oh, that's young Woody Harrelson. Wait. Oh, it's by Ron Howard? We've seen Ed TV. 
We've seen Ed TV, and I made you watch Encino Man. You did make me watch Encino Man. I remember Encino it's Man. It's got a bunch of big people in it. Have you seen a but, serious man? But not Ed TV. It's got Philip Seymour Hoffman in it. <laughs> that's not Philip Seymour Hoffman, dude. That's the guy that's in Wolf of Wall Street. It is. He that's plays Philip his dad. Seymour Hoffman. No, does he play his dad or his lawyer? His dad. His dad. You are missing out. <sighs> Wait. So you agree. I haven't seen it. Wait, I meant to say that's a man. <laughs> Fuck. You are missing out. You. I'm sure Ryan. I don't think Ryan's seen Ed TV. I don't. I have not seen Ed TV. <sighs> I'm sorry, Justin, I haven't. Justin, this is another one of your false memories that How you concocted up. What do you mean? How many fucking false memories do I seem to have? Well, I don't know. When you were doing, you know, those little crack benders for about three months, you seemed to come up with a whole lot of memories during Name those. one. Uh, you had a memory that you and I went to Disneyland for a whole day, which that never happened. We did. You were smoking crack in your we room by yourself. We did go to Disneyland. No, we didn't, And Justin. we met Mickey. No, we didn't. And you got the Minnie Mouse ears. No, I didn't. Yes, we did. And I, I know got that's... the fucking Lilo and Stitch sunglasses. I know that's not true because it, I, would, I would never yeah. even get the Minnie Mouse ears. I would get the Mickey Mouse one. That's such bullshit. I would not get that's the Minnie Mouse bullshit. ears. That's such bullshit. You liked that her fucking bow was on it. That's no, why I you did. wanted it. I, why? I don't even like the bow, dude. It's, oh, yeah. it's no. He doesn't like the bow. He doesn't like the bow. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Of course. He's he's making things up. Dude. I'm just saying when when Matt and I have gone to Disney World, he always gets the Mickey Mouse ears and not the Minnie Justin, Mouse ears. You, you literally. Know why he did that? You were, because he was embarrassed. Justin, I don't. He's always wanted the Minnie Mouse ears. You told me this. He's always wanted the Minnie Mouse ears, but he's afraid to get them because he won't match with you. You were and literally. He doesn't want you to be upset. That's not true. You were literally institutionalized for crack induced psychosis, no, Justin, no. for two months. No, and I don't see what that has, and that has nothing to do with Disneyland. We, we They stressed not to bring that up specifically unless you might be experiencing a deep kind of illogical break from the norm. Are you having like which, an, an episode, like a post crack episode of psychosis? Have you been smoking crack again? Look at me. Let me see your pupils. Look at me, Justin. No. Let me see your pupils, man. Look at me. No, don't touch me, dude. <laughs> Seriously, stop. Pinpoints. Your pupils are so tiny, dude. You've been smoking crack again, haven't you? No, I have not. Coming up with these fantastical stories about how you and I have seen Ed TV together. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's a fantastical story. Apparently to you it is. So... <laughs> Okay, so I get I get my ass home from work, long day of work, hard at work. My hands are fucking worked to the bone. And what? I get I get shit on because I, I want to sit back and light up a little crack? Listen, man, getting home, like we we appreciate the hard work you do, but getting home and hitting the pipe is not is not at all a healthy way to unwind. You don't appreciate shit. I do appreciate you. You don't have to. Well, I'm one thing to... you shouldn't. You no, Matt. You you shouldn't have to appreciate crack. One doesn't have to appreciate crack. No, I'm appreciating his hard work at the office. Exactly. I don't appreciate the crack. Exactly. I really don't appreciate the crack smoking. He appreciates the hard work at the office. He appreciates especially that award-winning, beautiful smile of yours that you shine to us every single morning you walk in. Which, by the way, is not going to be so pretty soon if you keep smoking crack. I only smoke crack through my nose. Oh, that should be fine then. Yeah, yeah. But no, you shouldn't be smoking crack at all. Actually, if you smoke meth through your nose, you wouldn't get meth mouth, right? Well, meth mouth you isn't meth from nose. Well, meth mouth, <laughs> which might be worse. If I'm not mistaken, meth mouth isn't actually from the chemicals hitting your teeth. It's from you just stop taking care of your teeth altogether, right? I I, I don't know. Like, what I haven't I haven't done enough like meth you said, yet I've to figure the, it out. I've got that award winning smile, so. It is an award-winning smile. Have you ever won an award for anything? Yeah. Like, Ron, Ron and your... I have both won. Uh, the your... same award. The same award, yeah. What was it? Best Picture. At a, co a campus oh, movie that's fest. Right. What's your, is that your favorite award you've ever gotten? <laughs> Probably. Because it uh, it was like... Because originally I, I would come out here to like collaborate and stuff. Like Daniel and I would be flown out by Mark. And that was like our ticket to being out here. But like right. that was the first time that it felt like uh, Daniel and I earned it for ourselves yeah. this one time. Yeah. You know, not saying, you know, like we didn't earn coming out here regardless. Sure. But it's just like it It was like all on us. It was like the work we did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I don't I've never gotten an award. Other than the one for my got a key to the city. Yeah, but hey, that's an award. That's a huge that's like, award. 
That's a joke award. You're about to you're about to get a hundred thousand subscriber plaque, Justin. That's a big award. Is that an award or is that just something that? You're That's just not gonna... Justin. I could have sworn you told me you won best shit shoveler three months in a row at your old job. Yeah, but what? 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 You know, I don't know. I mean, the trophy was just of a kid kicking a soccer ball. Obviously, they didn't have any exactly. specific yeah. trophies. Like, I don't know. I want I want to get an award. You know. Hey, maybe uh. I, it's like that episode of SpongeBob when Patrick wants the award. And SpongeBob's got all those trophies in his closet. Maybe, maybe we could get Justin an award of some sort. Well, don't you have your plaque? Your the nothing but lag. You're going to get that plaque at some but point. But that's not an award, though, is 100, it? Hundred thousand subscribers. That's an award. It's just like a. It, it's it's an award of recognition for something that you've achieved. Thanks for making us money. You know. No, they're saying thank you for being. Uh, Justin, successful. you were very excited when the Super Mega Million plaque came in. Yeah, but that's cooler. Why is that cooler? It's just cooler. Hundred thousand's cool too. But 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 nothing but lag. If you got if you had a plaque that was just that that's like that stemmed f that was your baby from the start. That yeah. is all that is like I just you don't know, I don't know if I can do that an award though. That it's a milestone. A milestone, yeah, that's fair enough. That's true. What about you? Any awards? I mean, we don't enter many competitions, so we're not winning many awards Dude, these the days. Dude, the fucking, what, what is it? What, what was the award Hunter won? A Streamy? A Streamy, yeah. Dude, why don't they have a category for editors? Well, we've never been nominated for a Streamy. It's because our fans haven't nominated us. We need to be nominated Assholes. for Streamies <laughs> next year, and they need to have an editor category, because I want to sweep that shit. Well, all the Streamies are rigged. They're all friends with each other, you know, it's... Oh, yeah. Uh, you think they actually choose the best? If they did, it would have been Sant no mind. You know, <laughs> if uh there's an award I got a point. <laughs> hey, I got a point. There's an award that Ryan and I should have won. <laughs> New York Times good. bestseller. There is. That's Except, an award that we should have that we should have won. We didn't because New York uh, Times is bullshit. Stupid stipulations. Trump made was, it Trump so. was cooking when when he when he was calling out the New York Times, the phony New York Times. We sold more copies than necessary than most books probably that get on the list even the, sell yeah, to begin what was with. The catch it was because it wasn't published. No, it's because someone. it's because it wasn't distributed in uh, various chain retailers. The, the the funny thing is, there is no direct reason why we didn't get it. It's because at the end of the day, it is a person's decision. Even if you met all the criteria, it is still up to someone's yeah. opinion. You can meet all the criteria and just not end up on well, there. You could send like a, a million copies and if the New York Times is just like, eh. All we have to do is find out who makes those decisions. And get the book sold in a Barnes and Noble, dude. I think it's the New York Times. Barnes Shane, and Shane, Do <laughs> Barnes and Noble is not enough. Yeah, no, you're right. You can't just do Barnes, but and Noble. not even just Barnes and Noble. But like Shane Dawson got his fucking stupid "I Hate Myself" book in bookstores everywhere. Well, that's because he got a legitimate publisher. Got a we self-published. We self-published. If we why if, can't we get a publisher? Because we, they take like sixty percent. Oh. If we self-publish, we get to keep all of it, all of our hard work. Our our our. Just like our little mental creations that mm. we came up with together. It is like raising a child together. Yeah, it? yeah. I'm proud we made that book, and I don't, I don't want to give any any greedy publishers any money when we are capable of self publishing and selling it ourselves. Because what do they do? They're they're just some, they're they're just some blockade in the way mm -hmm. to to make independent artists fork over their hard work so they can earn an extra buck, just so they can have a piece of the pie. It makes me sick. Well, speaking of piece of the pie, uh, if you if you want an extra piece of, of this week's pie that you can't get anywhere else, you can go over to our Patreon right now. For five bucks a month, you can actually watch Super Mega Cast After Hours, which is a whole extra part of this podcast. We turn off a couple lights up there, too, mm -hmm. so it, it changes, the mood has changed. And, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a whole extra part of this podcast that's behind the epic paywall. And uh, there's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of fun shows on our Patreon. And, uh, yeah, we appreciate the support. Uh, go check out Justin. Go subscribe to him. Nothing but lag on YouTube. He's almost at 100,000 subscribers. He wants that plaque. You don't want us to plug you? Okay. No? Do, do you want to... Do you want to... He's a humble... He's a humble man. Mm -hmm. But well, yeah. you, you appreciate the fact that we are doing that, though. Okay. You're not turning a blind eye to it and just going, stop. That's know? what's important. You're like, you're like I, I appreciate the gesture. But... It's not necessary. It's like one of those, right? Okay, cool. You know, I want to. I want to become that that guy that like ends messages with dash J. 
you know. Every text, if yeah. you want, you just do, would you put would you put a period at the end? Mm-hmm. A period just, at the end, and then dash J. Okay, on a separate or, line. Or like for you, like if you were to do it, it'd be like dash R. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. My therapist does that. He goes dash B at the end of every message he sends. Lowercase. Cool. Sometimes it depends on how much he's had to drink. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Therapists tend to do their job better though when when hammered. I've noticed. My therapist is drunk. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know. Give us five dollars to watch the rest. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Matt and Ryan, that was not funny. But I love Super Mega. <laughs> <laughs>